This episode was brought to you by Slate Black Industries. For M-Lock grips and accessories, visit slateblackindustries.com. It's a formidable weapon. Until we get some glass on it. This will have to do. Indeed, until we get some glass on it, Josh. Until then. Hey guys. Technically, both of these rifles have already been to the practical accuracy range. ZF-39 Sniper actually made it out to 1100 yards, or one kilometer. And the straight infantry iron sighted 98K, we took it out to 500. Now, I got to talking with Carl over at In Range, and Carl actually has a lot of uh, experience on the 41s, on the originals and the repros. And so the more I talked to him, the more I thought that it would be interesting to outfit our infantry 98K with a ZF 41 to see how it does. Because when you watch it later on in a segment where Carl talks about the reason, the history, and the development of the 41, our complaints on the iron sights were actually very similar to what the Wehrmacht complained about. And you'll see in this video that our performance with the ZF 41 very much covers a lot of those complaints that the Wehrmacht had and we had on the original infantry iron sighted 98K. So without further ado, let's start the show. I have a lot of ammo. Hopefully you don't need that much. One fifty. Yeah, no question about that one. Jeez. We're on at two hundred. All right, we're on a 250. Yeah. All right, need one more there at 250. Forgot how ridiculously hard eight millimeter hits. <laughs> All right, we're at 300. Okay, just high, uh, about a half target high. Windage is good. Okay. Impact, dead center. Jesus. You having trouble spotting these at all, Josh? No, these have been good. <laughs> 350. That one's done. Yep. All right, we're on at 400. 400. Okay, you're just over the top there by about half a target. Okay. Just off the right edge. Impact. Impact. Nice. That was a good center hit. Good, good. Nice. Hey, on this one? Oh, I actually pitched around there. Oh, did you? Let me, 450. Uh, let me put the shot back in first. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. 
All right, 450. 450. First one's on you. Let's figure out where you're at, okay? Okay. Impact, dead center. Neutralized. What was that? All right, we're out to 500. Okay. That was just to the left. Left? Yes, left. Take your take your first hold one more time. It's high. You're in the bar. That's what's happening. I'm seeing the frag from the bar. Oh, I see. Okay. So it's, uh, wow, it's in the bar? That, that last shot definitely was. Impact. All right, that was at four o'clock, literally just underneath the edge. 2.30, just on the edge. Impact, dead center. Excellent. Woo! Ooh. I hope that didn't uh, affect anything. I was tugging on the microphone strings. So, another rendition of the Mauser. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wunderbar. <laughs> the Deutsche Mauser. Man, those are so much easier to call than 5.56. Five, I'll tell you this, they were much easier to hold off on wind. Because guess what? I did not hold off on wind <laughs> all the way out there. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, it's like running a very streamlined freight train into the target. <laughs> After a morning of shooting these little pea shooters. Yeah. It's awesome to take out something like this. So walk us through then. Okay. What the heck is going on on the front end of that, that receiver? The ZF-41 was developed in 1939 after the Nazi invasion of Poland. Um, troops in the field requested to have some sort of sharpshooter rifle or designated marksman rifle. And what culminated from this was this right here, the ZF-41. Uh, it is a 1.5x optic that has a long eye relief that allows you to retain the capability of loading from a stripper clip and therefore have don't lose any of the rate of fire of the K98K, which by the way, you certainly don't want to lose any of the rate of fire considering you're using a bolt action rifle at this point. Initially, the car 98 k was milled with a special mount right here to then put the ZF41 on from the factory and then zeroed in the factory and then provided out to the field for that purpose. Um, in an attempt to accelerate the adaptation rate of the ZF41, they started putting out field modifiable um, sight blocks right here. Essentially, you would replace the uh, rear sight spring assembly with a mount that was part of that. Those were not as accurate as the ones that were milled by the factory, but it was a way to get more ZF-41s deployed out there into the combat arena. Uh, the goal was to get a 6% of all CAR 98Ks uh, mounted with ZF-41s. They never quite got there, but that was the intention. But what landed up happening is this turned out to be the most manufactured German optic of the war, if not the most manufactured optic of the entire war, with approximately, if not a little more than 100,000 ZF-41s made, and the large majority of them fielded in combat. The original request in 1939 of providing an optic for a designated marksman in each squad this optic actually completely achieved that goal. When you're using iron sights, you have to focus on the front sight. The rear sight and the target you're aiming at become somewhat blurry, with the front sight focus being how you acquire the best accuracy. But that of course means that if you're shooting at a fleeting or moving target or something that's hard to see, that's very hard to do. As well as, quite honestly, the CAR 98K's barley corn sights are less than optimal. So by putting everything onto one sight plane and just focusing on the German post that's in the ZF-41, it greatly increases your ability to hit and neutralize somewhat difficult targets. But what happened was this. As the war dragged on in 1942, the Germans realized they needed, a more quali uh, they needed to deploy more snipers. A sniper, of course, is something very different that provides very precise fire against high-value targets out to generally very long distances. In World War II, you're talking five, 600 yards or more. 
And 1.5x as an optic is not viable for that. It's just not something that's capable for hitting targets at that distance. But what happened was the German sniper program was greatly deficient in being able to manufacture sniper rifles, and they started pushing this one scope that they had a lot of into the sniper role, not the designated marksman role. And overwhelmingly, the men that were put into the sniper training program hated this optic. Because the reason they hated this optic is they weren't there to be a designated marksman, they were there to be a sniper. And this optic is not applicable for the sniping role. It got pushed into the role, the snipers were forced to use it, but for the most part, they universally hated it. If this scope had been actually deployed as it should have been, with a goal of 6% in the designated marksman role, I think we would have a very different narrative today. One would ask, what's the ideal ZF-41 deployment? Like, if I were to do the perfect rifle with the ZF-41 on it, what would I do? And it would not be on a bolt action, let's be realistic. Bolt actions are obsolescent, and really were even in World War II. When you have a world where the M1 Garand exists, why are you running a bolt? But that's another conversation. At the same time, the ZF-41's eye relief is quite good, but the reality is the eye box is not. You really have to be on the gun to be able to get a sight picture with it. So what I think this would actually really work best on is something that is semi-automatic with minimal recoil. And you know what? The Norwegian resistance did that perfectly. The M1 carbine has some issues of itself, but the M1 carbine cartridge is really effective to 200, maybe 300 yards on a good day. And this optic is really, really good for precise aiming to targets out to 200 something yards and providing better accuracy and the ability to engage without having to deal with the iron sights. And I think that M1 carbine's reliability issues aside, that might have been the perfect role for the ZF-41 type scout DMR type application. What we saw today, I think, was what the German theory was supposed to produce. Mm -hmm. In theory, with good glass quality, you could use a narrow scope body with a really tight field of view and still have uh, good results like this. In theory, having a ballistic drop compensator on, on that type of a ring it should be no it should happen no problem in theory with good ammunition you should be able to clean a kd range like this mm -hmm. again i said many a times in, in theory. theory in practice these scopes were extremely difficult to zero and in practice the shooters didn't even use a ballistic bullet drop compensator because they would just set it on a fixed distance like a 200 meter distance and just use holdovers Hold over and under, yeah. um and in practice on the repro one anyways it doesn't correspond to the actual markings mm. like i actually marking number three i thought it was 300 meters is my hold for 500 yards sure yeah mm -hmm. my marking for two and a half is my hold for 400 yards and i i fully respect that it's it's supposed to be in meters my point is 400 yards is closer to 360 Something meters. meters right not 200 yes so yeah. the repro is also entirely off yeah the zero on these things are incredibly complex i'm going to show you right now how this thing zeroes and it is really weird and wonky and janky oh so here we are in the zeroing process of the zf-41 it does have a sunshade this thing right here is likely to fall off unless you do something to it you need proprietary tools. Again, how German. Turn this counterclockwise. This would come forward. You'll see there's two slots there. One that goes in this, one that goes in that. These things move. In theory, this moves what they say the German post into a figure eight pattern. The reality is this just moves the post randomly. This is an awful thing and very hard to do. And the reason you're gonna go through a lot of ammunition zeroing this, unless you do it the way I say. Take the sun shield off, keep it locked. Get this lead sled, strap this thing down so it's not gonna move. Aim with the iron sights on your target and release the lock ring and turn this and move it randomly because it's gonna move randomly to zero the post to the same point of aim as the irons. Lock the lock ring, fire three rounds. So make sure the gun doesn't move, it's strapped in tight. Move these very carefully for the post to now point at where the holes are on your target at 100 meters. Lock the lock ring, and then fire another three rounds. If you got that right, you're gonna be done. You could theoretically do this in six rounds. If you have a lead sled and you're by yourself, you're probably gonna do it in about 20 rounds. If you don't have a lead sled, 
and you're just trying to do this off of a bag where the gun moves every time you fire it, good luck, you're going to go through hundreds of rounds. And the answer to that question is 242 cartridges of 792 Mosa! But that is my way of recommending U0, your ZF41. Now, let's go back to Nine Ho Reviews, and Henry, let's see how you do with a ZF41 on your course of fire. You zero it with two little sticks that are on the side, and then as you move it, the sight drifts, like, upwards and then out, and then the other stick would drift it upwards and then out. Yeah. So you need to figure out sort of exactly where it is, shoot a few rounds, and then continue to zero. Now, this problem is compounded. This is match ammunition. These are my hand loads that I use for the 98K sniper. This problem is compounded when your typical 98K is expected to shoot 5 MOA back in World War II. <laughs> so imagine having a 98K that's very difficult to zero, ammunition that shoots about 5 MOA, um, and you're in a field condition. And you're looking through something that is smaller than a roll of toilet paper. Yes. So it's, in a sense, this is the pinnacle of the German follies of World War II. One of our viewers, Robert, he had a, his friend Joachim, who was a German sniper instructor back in World War II. And we set up a, an interview with uh, Joachim, who we called Joe. Um, and I was trying to interview him because I wanted some supplementary information to the 98K sniper video that we made. Unfortunately, Joe passed away two weeks before our interview, so we were not able to talk to him and kind of learn about some of the things. But feedback from Robert was that Joe actually really enjoyed our video, and that was really, that's, that's immensely cool. And since he was a sniper instructor back in, um, back in World War II, so he was injured on the Eastern Front and taken back to the schoolhouse. And a lot of the schoolhouses had injured veterans who would give their mm -hmm. recounts and teach the newer generation. Um, they all preferred the typical mounting that we shot earlier. Uh, and one of the things that's interesting on the typical, the, the uh, regular uh, ZF-39 mounting, um, you remember we were complaining because we were saying that it's too high of a mm -hmm. hold? Yeah. They would actually take winter gloves and wrap it around the stock to increase the comb height. Kind of like our snipers actually used M21s and they would tape stuff yeah basically on the generating back. a proper cheek weld for themselves yes now the problem was whenever these snipers would go back to their um their headquarters or, or back to the posting the german the field, ones you mean. the germans yes uh propaganda would be there and and the propaganda soldiers would tell them to take that off so they can generate photos of them because a lot of the world war ii sniper uh, footage and photos were actually generated by propaganda on both both sides. Mm -hmm. It was it was actually quite rare to have actually a photojournalist on on the field right. in the fight. Uh, so, according to Robert uh, and Joachim, they actually did not like the ZF forty one scopes as well. Yeah. Um, they all saw it as useless. Is this the inception of the scout optic or scout scope design? It ki yeah, it kind of is because yeah. you can use stripper clips. You can have a, uh, a long uh, sight relief. Mm -hmm. um, I can actually use my iron sights and then pop up to use yeah. the optics if, if you needed. Use, if you shoot both eyes open with it, are you able to see? Yes, very, very through? easily. Right. Here, try it out. Yeah, I would probably, I mean, if I was shooting this in any sort of actual environment, I would probably be shooting this both eyes open. Yeah. And then if I'm, maybe if I'm taking a real precision shot, I might mm -hmm. close down. Were you shooting both eyes open on the course? I or? don't know. I'd have to, I don't know what I'm doing sometimes when I'm on <laughs> video. I just do it. <laughs> but um, the, the thing is, like, I actually like this. I like shooting this more than the other one. Mm. But I also have match ammunition yeah. that I could zero the scope that I have figured out where the holds are. Right. So, so I, there, there's a difference between a modern variety, modern repo variety. With, correct. With proper match hand loads versus shooting it with five MOA. Yeah. Cartridges. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and it, 
in theory, it was supposed to be a step up, but in mm -hmm. practice, they ran out of ZF-39 scopes for the snipers, started issuing these things. So, Yikes. you know, one side, you didn't have these for the regular soldiers, and the other side, your snipers were using what they inferred as inferior optics. Right. right. So, that, again, goes back to the entire German development of their weapon systems. In theory, it should work. Right. Sturmgewehr. In theory, it would revolutionize the world, but you don't have unlimited ammunition supply. Yeah. Because eight Kurtz is hard to get to the front lines. Um, there's a lot of things that, that they ended up developing the theory for, and we ended up gravitating towards it. And the scout scope concept, like you said, is exactly one of those. Funny thing is on PUBG, it's actually closer. It looks closer to this concept of sniper rather than the actual German sniper. Yeah, except it's mounted up with this. Yes. <laughs> Which then it makes no sense because the eye relief on the ACOG is about that one. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, well, cool. Yep. So I'm I'm glad we did we did this, and and I would say this is far more enjoyable to shoot than the proper uh, ZF thirty nine because I I'm getting a good cheek rest this little divot right here i like to put it where my collarbone is especially if i'm shooting prone i fire it and i just let it kind of like slip a little bit so i don't take the entire recoil of the 8 mil mauser mm -hmm. i can't do that with a 98 with the sniper without it coming close to my eyeball right so this is good and i could still use these so nice yeah. oh cool that was a good run yeah I may, I may take it out for a hunting season one of these days excellent Do you enjoy arguing with other viewers on the internet on which rifle performed better on practical accuracy? Well, we have a solution for you. Go to our Patreon page and scroll down. You'll find the practical accuracy scoreboard where we have ranked and compiled all the data of all the firearms we have tested on the practical accuracy course. Furthermore, it's already separated into the different categories, so you can go back to your argument as quickly as possible. And whether you decide to support us via Patreon, subscription, or just a normal viewer, we thank you. 